All right, we're going to do a quick one here. Last time I was talking about this project. I got a little game. I showed you how to set up your files. And I said, there's another really important part, how to name your files. Naming is really, really, really important. It's more important than you think. It could mean your game not running on some systems. So let's, let's, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Okay. So I'm going to talk about a couple of things. I'm going to talk about how to name files. I'm going to talk about how to name nodes. I'm going to talk about how to name other stuff in your script. And here's where we're going to start. So for those of you new to programming, you probably don't know about this. There's a concept in all programming, not just game dev, called the style guide. This is a suggestion by the generally the people who wrote the language. Sometimes it's a community thing, you know, like if it's not an open source, it's going to be the, the company. Uh, in this case, you know, it's still, it's the people who write the documentation. They got the GD script style guide. So what this is going to tell you is stuff like how to name your files, how to capitalize your stuff, how to use white space, spaces and indentation and uh, new lines. Um, Godot's built-in script editor uses a lot of these conventions by default. Let it help you. <laughs> That's where you are almost, almost 90% telling the truth but there's one big caveat to that i'm gonna give it to you the thing that we're most concerned with right away the thing we want to talk about first which is two-thirds down the page is file names so Use snake case for file names. For named classes, convert Pascal case class name to snake case. Snake case means just like this, all lowercase underscores where you would put spaces. Pascal case is similar to camel case. You might've heard of camel case. Pascal case is where you uppercase every word where there would be a space, right? There would be a space in between Pascal and case, but instead they capitalize each word. Um, there's also camel case. Camel case is the first letter of the name is lowercase because the camel has the hump in the middle, right? But it has and the camel has a big head too. I, I didn't do it. I didn't. I didn't decide what these things are called. Man, come on. Anyway, so snake case and cam, uh, snake case and Pascal case are the two uh, capitalization schemes that they use in Godot. The reason you want to keep these consistent is that this is how Godot is written, and this is how the engine already names things. So when you use functions in Godot, they're all going to be named like this. Any files, if you go into the source code of Godot, it's consistent with how they name files. So at a glance, when you're looking at your code, you can tell uppercase, this is a class name, or this is a node name, and lowercase, this is a file name. Um, so that's why it's it's important to name things in a certain scheme. They talk about this really briefly, but you always want all files to be lowercase snake case. And Remember what I said at the beginning, where Godot suggests a lot of this by default? Check this out. Save branch as seen. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> there it is, not suggesting it by default. When you make a new file, when you make a new file, rename it every time, every single time. So I've made a new, I've made a new scene. This is correct. You want nodes to be named uppercase, Pascal case. You want files to be named lowercase with underscores. If you make a script, it will name it based on the name of the scene sometimes. <laughs> um, so this, this info thing at the top, yes, but also no. You should read this style guide. I suggest reading the style guide and trying to stick to this because this will help you it will help you when you're looking at your stuff, you'll know, okay, this is the, this is the name of a function. 
this. I don't see anything capitalized here. You get the, get the idea. This is an enum or it's a constant. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in here. Talks about how to do that. Parentheses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the kind of thing that's important whatever. So this is something else I just did. Uh, you can always take so something I just did right now that you might not know about. <laughs> it's a topic for another video again, how to split things off into branches. I'm not going to talk about that right now. If you want to know more about it, ask me in the comments. I'll, I'll explain it. That was an example to show you how to save files. When you're making new nodes, they suggest, by default, it is created with the name of the node. Always, always, always rename this. My control node. It's better to be, the more descriptive you are, the better. The problem is when you when you don't rename something, when you don't rename something, and if I was just going to create a new sprite, right, 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 I can refer to the sprite like this, right? I can also refer to Sprite like this. These are two different, very, very different things. This is a node that I have instanced. This is a built-in type Sprite that I can make new Sprites out of. Like I can make a new Sprite, new Sprite, Sprite equals that. This is totally, totally different. So at a glance, these don't look that different. You, you want to be naming these things. You want to name it like, Hat. I'm going to give him a hat. I don't have a hat sprite, but you know. Now it's totally clear which one's which. But you do want to name any kind of class name or node Pascal case to differentiate it from variables. Variables are all snake case. Function names are all snake case. And here's another, here's another thing where Godot is going to suggest something that you shouldn't stick with. If you add a signal, it's going to suggest that you make a function with Pascal case. If you named your nodes Pascal case, automatically it picks the name of the node to create a function. So this is this is not agreeing with the style guide. You can find this in the style guide. Functions and variables. Use snake case to name functions and variables. Suggested, did not use snake case. This is not snake case. That's some combination between camel case and snake case. Some really, really bad combination. So rename that. Rename, rename your nodes, rename your things. And also the renaming of nodes is another style guide. The renaming of nodes is another style guide thing. Well, that's important. That's less confusing. All this stuff If you're writing code, good practice when you're writing code is to try to make it so that you can look at code at a glance, not just you, but other people, especially if you're working on a team that the names you use help you at a glance. It's the same reason we have context sensitive highlighting, right? We have we have these colors. Without these colors, you would be lost if you didn't have a good color scheme here. Um, there's also some like there's some good old default colors. I'm pretty sure I changed this because there's something that is red by default that I kept getting confused about because I thought red meant like Oh, the I think I don't like that the function is red. Like red 
usually means bad. So I don't like to have red highlighting ever like export bar. Right now. But yeah, it, without these colors, your brain just loves them. You, you probably don't even think about it, but when the colors are gone, you're going to notice, right? It's the same way with names. If you name your stuff in a way that makes sense, that your brain loves, you're going to have such an easier time looking at stuff and telling what's going on. And it's the same with other people. And you can work with other people and you can work on the same code and other people will be able to look at your code and they will also know what's going on. It'll be so easy for everybody. So I plead with you. I plead with you. Think about your names and make a plan and stick to it. Just like with your files, like I told you, just stick with it. Stick to your guns. And that's it. I hope you learned something. Next one's going to be about the project. It's up on GitHub. There's Happy Adventure. I also have a smaller template project that Happy Adventure was built on top of that I designed for anyone to be able to use the couple of basic things that you can build on top of that I think you're going to like. And I'm going to show that off in the next video. Hopefully start you off on the right foot, right? You can move around, you can change levels. It's got the nice little level fader that you can fade between different levels. I'm going to do some videos about building different types of games off of the template so that maybe you can get some ideas, you know? So if you want to see it, <clears throat> YouTube voice, comment, like, and subscribe. It's hard to say, man. Subscribe, comment, like, and subscribe. Comment, 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 like, and subscribe. Comment, like, and subscribe. Comment, like, and subscribe.